Jody Jasmine, so the reported shooting took place behind me. We also reached out to the Department of Human Services just about the certifications. PennDOT completing some 54 road and bridge projects. In fact, one of them right here, the Market Street Bridge in Spring Garden Township just reopened about two weeks ago. If you're caught on camera passing a stop school bus, you won't get any points. That's because they can't identify if the driver of the vehicle is the owner. Skyview 21 flying over the school live where students were on lockdown for most of the day. Josh Shapiro will be sworn in shortly here as the 48th governor of Pennsylvania. Five eighty one East ramp from 15 North with a silver BMW. One occupant. Naloxone can typically be picked up at pharmacies and clinics, but now those looking to get their hands on the life saving drug can get it delivered right to their mailbox free of charge. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And when some area kids are squeezing love into their community after that fire at the Broad Street Market, it left a real taste, a sour taste in their mouth. They're switching that around now because at the intersection of Harris and Green Streets tonight, an evening bake sale lemonade stand. It's a fundraiser for the market and CBS 21 chief photojournalist Dave Scarnato was there with the sweet sights and sounds. Having a bake sale and lemonade stand as a fundraiser for the Broad Street, the Broad Street Market. Market. We have cookies, brownies, brownies, brownies crispy treats, vegan banana mu nut muffins. Can I get two of the rice crispy treats? The Gazy Kids had the idea of fundraising. Miss Nora has been a fundraiser in her. A short history of being a kid. The, the littlest gazies, Nora and August, are uh, very active activists in our community. And any time that there is a problem, big or small, they uh, run right toward it and see how they can be helpers. I started it, and then just like ten people were like, "I want to help." We joined forces and had a couple days of baking and walking the neighborhood to kind of spread the word. It seems like the more that people have heard about it, the more they've been wanting to jump in, which tells a bigger story of our market, too, of how many people have been affected by this fire. Do you guys want anything from the bake sale? I would like a lemonade. It really inspires you to know that no matter how small you are, you can make a difference. Who wants lemonade? We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We already have a similar model in place through the Department of Aging. The long-term care ombudsman helps advocate for older Pennsylvanians. One of the bigger issues that residents here on Kensington Street are having has to do with the parking situation. The goal is to get more people even thinking about taking a chance walking into this profession. But the challenges start even before you get to put on this uniform. Scammers often making contact through text, call, or email. But not all scams are as clear-cut as clicking the wrong link or giving someone private information over the phone. Stop the car! Stop the car! First responders can be faced with dangerous and chaotic situations every day. Wait, once I put that uniform on, I, I feel like I'm in a different role. Okay, copy. 63, are you available? Lower Allen Township Police Corporal Ed Curtis taking our crews behind the scenes. Every call that you don't, you're missing information is going to make you apprehensive. And it's, you know, what am I walking into? What's this person experiencing? Even a traffic stop is apprehensive. You know, there's, you're, you're putting yourself on edge. It's like, until you contact that person and, and begin talking with them, you don't know what that experience is going to be. <laughs> 581 East ramp from 15 North with a silver BMW, one occupant. This driver not causing any trouble. Does he know he's getting a warning? No. Not yet. Yeah, okay, so he's praying right now. Yeah, he's, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not all calls are that simple. It's a very hard job, and you could do absolutely everything perfect, and it could still be wrong. So it's a very difficult situation to put yourself in. Emergency calls taking a toll, both physically and mentally. So when it comes to mental health awareness from an officer's perspective, how can that impact an officer responding to their community and to different calls on their job? So 
Um, Anybody's still in there to grab it? Officers, you know, we're, we're people, right? We've experienced trauma ourselves. Your memories go back to that other call. Your reactions go back to that call. That can cause a, like almost a, a bigger reaction to that event because you're prepared for what you dealt with in the past. That's your experience. We talked with a lot of retirees uh, from different police departments that still have that one call, even 30 years later, that they're still having trouble processing. People sit with all those calls. They just sit in them and nobody talks about them. That's why former firefighter Lisa Zoll founded her counseling service, Grief Relief. First responders, they see trauma every day. So what we've seen is there's um, accumulation of trauma. I've had a couple calls. Um, you know, I, I, I had a uh, couple suicides uh, that uh, where it, it really affected me. Curtis, now a licensed therapist, works with Zolp. He says more needs to be done regarding the stigma surrounding mental health. The academy's like six months. You, there's just so much to learn that, yeah, sometimes, you know, there's, oh, there is exposure to wellness, but oftentimes that comes from how do we deal with people on the street that are in crisis? Sometimes heroes need help, and, and it's okay to get that help. If you or your family member is a first responder interested in mental health resources, we have a lot of information for you on our website, cbs21.com. Reporting in Cumberland County, I'm Candace Scalise, CBS 21 News. For the Bears, it was goalie Hunter Shepard who played a perfect game keeping the puck out of the net. Like on this play, Coachella on the move, Riker Evans takes a shot on the net and it's stopped by Shepard, giving the crowd something to roar about and you can hear them in that video. Shepard in the second period making another highlight reel save on the one-timer. The game was scoreless through three periods, so we go into overtime. And it's Garrett Pilon who plays the hero scoring the only goal of the game to give the Bears the victory. In 1985, the world got its first opportunity to wear the same sneakers as a basketball legend. Man was not meant to fly. Air Jordan. I was a 10 year old kid growing up in Philadelphia and when Jordan, you know, Michael Jordan became a star and Jordans first came out. Brian Dean's original black, red, and white Nike Air Jordan is on display inside his sneaker boutique, John's on Fire. And I loved wearing them. I wore them for a year and a half until I had two holes in the bottom and my toes were crawling under. I didn't know it at the time, but that was the beginning of call it sneaker culture. A culture that has turned the sneaker market into a multi-billion dollar industry, expected to reach $30 billion by 2030. Why are sneakers so important? It's just it just style. It's a yeah. lifestyle. Sneakers are a lifestyle. And with the lifestyle comes the lingo. Let's start with the basics. Sneakerhead. A sneakerhead is somebody that starts their outfit with what sneakers they're going to wear. Dead stock. DS or dead stock means brand new. Yeah, I know what a John is too. And that would be what? That's a person, place, or thing. It's, just, it's your John. It's your personality. It's what you like. Or what mom likes, in Nico Tarasi's case. I'm wearing my mom's shoes right now. <laughs> when, I, when I put them on, I'm like, wait, what? I need to like them too, because we were wearing the same size. I'm new to the sneaker game, but this touch screen makes it really easy to navigate through the 1,300 styles of sneakers inside this boutique. But I'm learning there's another game in town, and he's 15. I usually just get pairs, and I'll post them on Instagram, and I'll have an asking price, and I'll tell them to give me an offer. Brayden Zimmerman doesn't even have a driver's license yet, I but he's accelerating past most boys his age. He's cashing in thousands of dollars from buying sneakers in store and online and then reselling them. The money per hour I'm making is a lot compared to getting a regular day job, so I could I probably I sold these ones in like an hour, made 40 bucks opposed to having a day job making 12 an hour. And he has quite the reputation at school. He knows what's fake, he knows what to get. He knows how to get it. He knows when to get it. He can get you anything really at any time. Can you pick yeah. something that you think would something. work for me? Yeah. Okay, you guys go do that. That's pretty. Yeah, it looks, it's a good shade of orange and I think you would like it. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, I love it, I love it. These really stand out from everybody else. Nobody really has these. What do you think of my shoes now? I mean, they're all right. <laughs> we could hook you up some Johns in here, but.